Welcome to Uptech Report. In our first video, we focus on one simple but wide-ranging question. What is artificial intelligence, or AI? In our second video, we dove a bit deeper into a subset of AI called machine learning. In this third topical episode, we'll explore what are specific use cases and challenges for AI in business, and how might it revolutionize the workforce in the coming years. To help answer these questions, we've interviewed a whole panel of AI experts, business leaders, CEOs, and entrepreneurs who are applying AI in their business today. We learned in our first video, one way to view AI is as an assistant that can help you know what to pay attention to and what to safely ignore. One expert details AI's ability to parse through large data sets, analyze documents, or provide simple, helpful reminders throughout the day. So we asked our experts, what else can AI do for business? I would start with like, let's look at all the little things that you do today that we could have a, an assistant do for you and uh, apply it there first. But of course, it can do a lot more than that. I think that today you're encountering AI a lot more than you realize. Um, you just don't know it. You know, the, the, the types of advertisement you're being served, you know, where things are stocked in the shelves for some specific stores. Like there's a lot of behind the scenes things, um, optimizing supply lines or, or supply chains, I should say, that, uh, that are impacting people without them really knowing. As we ramble around the internet, we leave little cookies and little behavioral patterns around behind us of like, what were we interested in? You know, Google is tracking, you know, where we go on the internet, which pages, how long do you stay at each page? And that ends up being a, uh, uh, creating an interesting model around like, what are your real interests? That's actually one of the biggest applications. Um, and I think it's not just Facebook, you know, anyone who's getting revenue from advertisements is definitely utilizing machine learning. And it's really amazing. Like at your fingertips, you can push, you know, do a couple of things and you've got a really powerful Azure cloud service that's gonna be providing intelligence uh, to your system. And that could be for product recommendations, it could be for natural language processing, it could be for image recognition if you wanna build that into your application or service. Um, you know, those, those kind of core frameworks, again, are there. You know, another one that, that you probably heard about is resume analysis. So can you automatically scan a resume and then tell me if that person is gonna be potentially a good employee for me or not? We've seen a lot of situations where you can train people to do their jobs through AI and gamification. And on the simplest level, it's leaderboards and seeing how people are performing against their group or their peers. It also allows you to find out what people are good at and what, what they're not good at, okay, and how we can uh, get them to learn a lot quicker, what technologies work for the learning, what techniques work for the learning. Everybody has a different use case. And the reason for that is we're so early on in the machine learning journey um, that there's not just one or two applications of it. In fact, you go into a large company and there's dozens of applications of it. And so right now, because people are just getting started, no two companies tend to have the exact same need with the exact same priority um, because machine learning is a real sort of general purpose tool that you can apply to lots of problems. Clearly, AI has plenty of effective uses for different types of businesses. But how has AI changed the fundamental approach for business leaders? Um, for me, I see it more as a revolution of finally having enough compute power, essentially to do a lot of these complex algorithms that you know have been limiting this revolution for years. If you've got a business case where you're trying to predict how much your customer is going to spend next year or whether or not customer X is going to like something or not, those are great uses for AI because you're basically saying, I've got a bunch of data that shows how people have reacted in the past, and I'm going to use that to try and predict the future. You know, you're always thinking about how do you apply automation to solve business problems so that you can scale, uh, provide better experiences. And, you know, ultimately these things are a lot smarter than us, as, uh, assuming that the data that's within the data set is tagged properly. More and more things are automated. If I'm a young person today, I would look at the career I'm going to choose and think like, how susceptible is that activity to being automated? Our experts agree that automation can help businesses become more efficient. That poses an obvious question and potential concern for employees and employers alike. Will increased use of AI mean fewer jobs? How exactly will AI affect the future of the workforce? Our experts weigh in. 
The right future for us is one where uh, the AIs of the world are basically aiding us and allowing us to do not have to do that grunt work. And instead, we're doing all the stuff that really requires a big brain. Maybe the impact is now you just have more people face to face and the machines do all the heavy lifting in the background so the people and now people can actually be more uh, face to face building relationships a little bit better. We had the industrial revolution, which was automation of industri industrial task. And, you know, yes, it replaced people, it replaced jobs. But uh, the great thing is, is at every point in history, when we've had things that automated tasks, uh, new jobs were created, higher level jobs, better paying jobs. You know, a lot of the jobs that I see that maybe are gonna go away in the near term, they're jobs that we shouldn't have people doing them. The only reason we have people doing them is because we didn't have technology before. If we'd have had technology before, we'd have said, of course we don't want humans doing looking at a screen for multiple hours. In order to have machine learning working in a real world environment and in a production and setting, you need somebody that's kind of keeping an eye on it over time. You need somebody that's helping keeping it trained over time. I refer to those as machine learning assistants. And so for all the jobs that are gonna go away because maybe somebody's doing a very routine manual task, there's a new set of jobs that are gonna open up to helping keep the machine learning algorithms trained over time. If you have a third to fifth grade reading level and you can identify baby elephants in a photo and box it, uh, you know, you're gonna be okay in this. And so it's not like you need uh, a data science, a uh, computer science degree from from Harvard or Stanford in order to to accomplish these objectives for a business. This economic need for compassion and empathy, um, for a smile, like those things are going to become desirable things for people who hire new people. And what's great about compassion and empathy, you don't need a degree for it. We've heard a lot about the benefits of AI, but what challenges do business leaders face with AI and machine learning? We asked our experts. It all starts with data. Um, and that's what we tell every client with machine learning is it all starts with your data. Um, the root of most of the problems when it comes to applying machine learning comes from the issues with data. I think that most people that are doing AI are using not enough data. And it is, going to result in inc incorrect conclusions and we're going to have bad results. And there's a, there's a potential, particularly on the consumer side of things where the bar is higher, uh, for people to uh, get turned off by some of the AIs that we're building. Um, and I think it's incumbent on us to get it right Machine learning, as I mentioned, is learning patterns in data. And if the data has garbage in it, or if it's very noisy, or there's problems, especially ones that you don't anticipate or you can't see yourself, then the algorithm's gonna learn those, those you know, learn that noise, or it's gonna start making misjudgments because it's learned patterns that were incorrect. And so if the data's not in pretty good shape, you're gonna have problems. And if you don't know the problem you're trying to solve for, and you're basically just looking for a solution that sounds really cool, um, you're not gonna get anywhere. You're just gonna basically, you know, spin your wheels, spend a ton of money, spend a ton of time, and then at the end of the day, have a sour taste in your mouth because, oh, you know, we tried AI that one time and it didn't work. Of course, not every business leader is familiar with using AI and machine learning. In our final question, we asked our experts what advice they would give to those looking to better utilize AI in their field. If you're a small business owner or you know even a large corporation that's looking to get into AI, it doesn't have to be you know a hundred thousand dollar or a million dollar investment. Um, really, the simplest, the easiest way to start is the mechanical Turk and fake it. Right, And so uh, you decision tree things and make sure that the data is tagged properly so that later somewhere down the road, you can start to implement, uh, you know, actual machine learning and, and data science on top of it. You know, just having your data structured properly uh, is a huge challenge for a lot of businesses just to overcome and understand. I would say a lot of companies, their core competency is not uh, building artificial intelligence systems, right? Their core competency is some domain topic, 
right? I'm really great at healthcare uh, and I'm going to continue to be really great at healthcare. And so maybe I'm going to partner with somebody that can help build an AI system where I'm bringing the expertise to that AI system in order to perform some type of an action. And I think every organization, every government, every person, again, should be thinking about every activity they're involved in and thinking, what should machines be doing and what should humans be doing? I would say that, that AI right now, it's, it's very easy to overhype it and also very easy to dismiss it. And the right path is somewhere between to understand it, understand how it can be used in your industry, how it can be applied and what results you're likely to see and make sure that you can understand why the decisions are being made. This was just a taste. Stay tuned as we share the full deep dive interviews we had with each one of our panel of experts and our upcoming episodes focused on specific topics that will transform the way you think about artificial intelligence. All this on Uptech Report's new series on AI.